Welcome to another edition of Wildcat Country. Eric Cohen and Shane Dale. Let me just say this. Uh, in life, my I have a motto that is um, everything has a way of evening itself out. And we would come on this particular show and talk about how great things were for a long period of time. And this is probably the most depressing, disappointing episode that Shane and I have made maybe outside of Arizona losing to Princeton last year in the tournament. I, I think this arguably might be worse, Shane. Uh, well, there's, let's see, there's that. There, what other candidates do we have? Uh, well, 70 to 7, the live stream we did there. Uh, yeah, the, but, the, yeah. NA, NAU was up yeah, there. That was bad. Yep, that yep, was bad, that was too. Bad. You know, I, I, I tweeted out about not even a month and a half ago, you know, Arizona basketball is number one and football is mm-hmm. number 14. Enjoy these times because you, they don't come around very often. And boy, was I righter than I expected to be on that one. You, it, you know what, though, Shane? It's, it's like I said, we had this question a few weeks ago. Will it get any better for Arizona? Yeah. And I said no. You said no. You recalled it. And I was not. You know what? That was an instant instance, Eric, in which I was just not cynical enough, which most people don't accuse me of being. Yeah, so here we are. Yeah. Uh, all right. So here's here's the game plan. Um, we're going to talk about our reaction more to Jed Fish leaving. We'll talk a little basketball in the third segment. Barrett Baker, our buddy, going to join us in the second segment. And then once a new coach is hired for Arizona, uh, we are going to Shane and I will do a, a, a podcast or a live stream of some kind uh, later this week and, and get some reaction out with that. But um, all right, Shane, I, you know, let's just get right into it. I don't think and there are any. Standouts this week. It's a lot of grievances. Let's, so. let's go ahead. Yeah, let, let's just skip right to the grievances. We can cover that in Buy or Sell. How's All that? right, this is Buy or Sell presented by our friends at Ice Shaker. Go to iceshaker.com. Use promo code Wildcat Country, capital W, capital C. Get $5 off. And make sure to fill out the post-purchase survey to let them know you heard it from us. All right, Shane, let's get to what everybody's thinking. Yeah. Uh, number one, you can't blame Jed Fish for leaving considering the financial differences between Arizona and Washington. So I did a, uh, a little Twitter thread a couple of days ago that, that looked super dumb at this. Well, somewhat dumb at this point. Uh, my gut feeling was that Jed was going to stay, and I obviously was wrong about that. One of the things I did mention, though, was that there is that possibility that mm-hmm. Jed could strike while the iron was hot. And you his stock may never be higher than it is right now. You know, like we all talk about, well, the Florida job next year. You know, no one would blame him if he left or the Florida job opened up next year. Well, who knows? Arizona could have gone 500 to the Big 12 next year, and no one's talking about Jed Fish, right? So, I, I no money talks, and I, and the one thing that bothers me is everyone's talking about how awful Arizona's financials are, and they are. But the football contracts are largely independent from that. You know, it yeah. comes from mostly from the boosters, from the private donors. It, even with that, though, even if Arizona was had was was healthy in that regard financially, Arizona wouldn't be able to compete with Washington offered him which was what almost eight million a year yeah i mean i get it yeah so it, I, and i don't know what we didn't get to see what air what his contract extension with arizona was going to look like I, i'm guessing it probably wasn't more than five million About a five year. five million yeah. yeah five million a year so on the one hand no that that is a you know how many of us would say no to a 50 percent or more pay increase so there is there is that aspect of it with that said you know every coach says you know i love it here i want to stay here a long time Jed went above and beyond to emphasize that he had no interest going anywhere else, that he loves it here. He, he said it as recently on, on a, like, two, two weeks ago on Jim Rome's show. He said it a couple of weeks earlier than that on a Rick Neuheisel's podcast. You know, I can't move my family again and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He is, I will give Jed this. He is an outstanding salesman. He yeah. sold us a, he sold, he sold us on the program. He ultimately sold us all a bill of goods. Because, you know, he's talking up the program one day and, and the virtues of, you know, embracing the, the lessons we learned with Dick, the, the Dick Tomey era after winning the Alamo Bowl, et cetera, et cetera. And then two weeks later, he's uh, there we're sharing video of uh, him signing the contract in Tucson with the Washington's athletic director. So it is a gut punch. I had a visceral reaction to that video. I don't know how anyone couldn't. So it is a business. I get it. It's it's possible to think that's a business, and you totally understand, you know, the opportunity that the Jed took. And it's also, I think, perfectly legit to think he's a bit of a snake. I think both can be true at the same time, and that's where I'm at. No, I don't blame him for chasing the money. You never know if his stock is ever going to be this hot again. But he said a lot of things that turned out not to be true. And while every coach says that, he 
went even further than most coaches did. And it turned out to be completely BS. All right. So here's where I'm at here. Uh, I think if Jed Fish had left for Florida or the NFL, I might have said, okay, I get it. Uh, makes sense. So be it. Uh, is what it is. I expected that after next year. I did not see this coming. I was shocked. Do I blame Jed Fish for taking the money? No, not at all. I understand it. I mean, would you leave for that much money? Uh, that much of a difference? If somebody told you at, at whatever job that is, whatever job you're doing, listening out there, Shane or myself, if somebody said, okay, you're going to get a, a job at a more prestigious place and you're going to get almost double your current salary. Um, yeah, I'm going, okay, I get it. Yep. Uh, but then I'm also not telling people, oh, I'm going to stay. Oh, I love this. Oh, this is great. I'm, I'm, he knew, I mean, listen, Jason Shear from Wildcat Authority has given some great info. I mean, you guys see it on Twitter, message boards or whatnot. And he basically said, Jed was going to leave after next year anyways. I mean, that's the case. He was going to no, leave after next year. breaking journey. news, but yeah, they're very likely. But I mean, yeah, he was looking after the ASU game, trying to capitalize, as you said, Shane. Yeah. So I don't blame him for that. Here's what I blame him for. He's going to pillage this roster, if possible. Mm -hmm. This and we'll well, he's get already to, pillaged the entire coaching staff, almost the or, entire coaching staff, almost, except, right, with, the, with the exception of the of, yeah, with the exception of the guys who actually went went to U of A and, and actually and, loyal to the university. And, and see, that's what I have a problem with. It's it's pillaging the roster. You know, we we um, gave crap to uh, uh, Jay Johnson when he left. Yeah. He took Jacob Berry and maybe one other guy, and that was it. This is Jed's going to take. I mean, Jonah Coleman's already in the portal. Yeah. I mean, we don't know about T Mac and Noah. There there are rumors out there. Yes and no, whatnot. And that is, I don't, it's not losing Jed Fish. It's the pillaging of the roster. Yeah. That I, bothers me to no end. I don't know how many guys are actually going to follow him to Washington just because it. you get the sense that a lot of players were as blindsided as we were by this decision. And, you know, I think that he, again, being a great salesman, he sold them as much as, uh, as they, as he sold us as fans and I think that I think a lot of them are going to leave. They're just they're going to, but not necessarily to follow him, just because they want to they want to play for someone else, or whoever the new head coach is. It's not a great fit. Um, that more, of course, NIL money is always a big deal as well. So I think it's going to be more from that regard. I mean, Jed will probably bring a couple of guys with him to Washington at least, but I think it's going to be more just because you know they wanted they want to find another. They they came to play for for a guy who's not there anymore, and so they're going to find someone else, whether it's Jet Fish or not. So, but see, uh, at what point? And, and I I know this is I, there are arguments on both sides, Shane. At what point do we say I am proud of this university and I want to play for this university, not yeah. just this coach? There's always that divide, isn't it? Like I feel like whenever something like this happens, it's like it's almost not a fifty fifty split. But there's always a split where it's. Some of the guys, it's about the university, it's about the program, and other guys, it's about more about the coaches. You know, it's always a little bit about both. But for some guys, it's I I want to follow this specific coach, and for other guys, it's I want I want to stay at this university. And I don't think there's a right or a wrong way to do it. But sir, I, I think there are some guys who are going to stay regardless um, of, of what happens. Because they wouldn't, the they wouldn't be handpicked to move. Yeah, yeah. But there's me some guys who are going to leave too, regardless of the new head coach who the new head coach is, you know, who the assistants in place. So they're going to get a feel for it. And they're going to hear from other schools. Hey, Hey, look, we can offer you this. We can offer you some money on top of it. Uh, and that the allure that's going to be, be because, you know, I, I think Jet fish was very successful at telling guys, look, you come play at Arizona and you have a better chance of going to the NFL and making more money in the long term than you would in the short term. Well, that's gone now. And as almost his entire staff has gone with it. So that's the big challenge that Arizona's facing is, you know, whoever whoever replaces Jed Fish, short term and long term, is going to be have to be able to sell players on that same thing. That's why guys come to play in the first place. You know, some guys are just looking for the quick NIL buck now. I get that. But most guys, it's like, I want to fine tune my skills so I can go play in the NFL, so I can be a higher draft pick, so I can be a draft pick, so I can make money in the longer term. And Jed and his staff were able to sell so many talented players on that. Yeah. And the next guy's going to have to do that too. And that is going to be a big challenge because Jed, like it or not, has those connections that that is a very good chance that whoever replaces it just isn't going to have. I, I saw this that just came out. Uh, Jed's um, amount, his buyout uh, before January 8th, next year, 12 million, 26, 10 million, 
27, 6 million. You know, that guy's not staying more than, and then it goes down, uh, down to five, then three, then one. Uh, then Washington's going to learn the hard way. Yeah. He yeah. He's not, he's not staying more than when, and by the way, he's not going to, that schedule is so much harder. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, you know, someone made a great point on, on Twitter earlier today, as well as that if Jade Delora hadn't gotten hurt, Jed Fisher would probably still be Arizona's head coach yeah. because Arizona probably would have won. You know, they would have gone to a bowl game. They would have probably won six or seven games if, De if Delora was still, still healthy, but they wouldn't be, they wouldn't have won 10 games. They wouldn't have gone to the Alamo bowl and Jed Fisher. Uh, I mean, basically Noah Fafita <laughs> sent Jed Fish to Washington. You know, you know, and I, I, I'm not, that's not fair. To exactly what I'm saying, but you understand it's just, what Noah did made Jed look even better than, than, yeah. than he probably yeah. deserved, which again, Jed did a fantastic job at Arizona. There's no, I'm not going to discredit him for that. And he put Arizona back on the map and I will give him credit for that, but it's just funny how things work out. You know, Jed used that, that it wasn't really a decision he made. It was Noah Fafita coming in because the Laura was hurt and Jen said, Oh yeah, let's stick with that guy. Tough decision. Right. And, and it propelled Arizona to 10 wins. Go oh, got him eight million bucks a year almost. Mm -hmm. So good for him. All right. The other thing that needs to be discussed, and obviously we're all disappointed. It's just gut punch after gut punch. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's probably going to get a lot worse because yep. um, I mean, we'll talk about the Johnny Nansen, Brent Brennan, anybody else, you know, possibly uh who's going to take over and, and whatnot. Let's start with this next question, though. When all is said and done, we need to be grateful. We should be grateful to Jed Fish for his accomplishments and look back upon his. Three years, at least the last year, very fondly by yourself. I think eventually we'll be able to enjoy it. Like right now, I you know I got that Alamo Bowl football behind me. It's hard yeah. for me to even look at right now because I'm just so disgusted with the situation. And it just goes yeah. because you know I look at that and I think you know good times ahead, and then and that that's that's, I mean for at least for the short term gone. I I think that yes, it, it Jed did show that yes, Ari you can win at Arizona. You can mm -hmm. you can be successful here. I mean, Rich Rodriguez to a certain extent showed that as well. Yeah. So that's not a mystery, but you know, coaches can can see, hey, you can win here. You know, even though Arizona is not a football school, and maybe you know the the school of North is, is in most years is the better program of the two. Not the last couple of years, but overall, it, you can win at Arizona. I think this whole episode, Eric, has just been kind of a sobering reminder of Arizona's pecking order in college football, and and it all comes down to money. And and look, we've talked about it. Uh, I would be content with a program that year in, year out, the minimum expectation was a bowl game. And yeah. every so often they, they exceed they that. Pop. And they pop, yeah. they, they pop and, and every, you know, maybe things go so well that, you know, with the expanded playoff, you have a chance to get in there. And I know we're all excited about that possibility next season, far less likely now, obviously. But I would take right. that scenario in a heartbeat. Look, Arizona just doesn't have the money to compete with some of these other programs. They don't have the pedigree to compete Especially with Especially now with, go with what's going on with the university, yeah. right. with the $240 million shortfall. I yeah. mean, there's obviously, but even so, Jed Fish was going to get a raise to five million. He got almost eight. You can't yeah. turn that. I mean, uh, exactly. I, I That's what it. I'm saying. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Even without the budget issues, you throw that out the window. We do, Arizona just can't compete with that. I mean, even you know, no. Johnny Nansen. Lee, I mean, who knows where he'll end up? Obviously, we'll talk about that in a second. But him leaving for Texas for essentially a demotion. You know, you can't come some, you know, it's about relationships. It's about, it's mostly about the money. It's also about relationships and it's about the pedigree of the program. And Arizona football just doesn't have that compared to some other programs. That doesn't mean they can't be competitive, but I think any, any Arizona fan who is thinking, oh, we're going to be a perennial college football playoff contender from here on out was never going to happen there. And, and the, the, if the next head coach who comes in and if he does as great a job as Jet Fish does over time, he's probably going to leave for more money eventually anyway, too. It's just the nature of the situation because Arizona is not in that top tier or even that second tier of college football. It doesn't mean they can't be good and have a, and surprises every so often, but they're not going to become a perennial national championship contender. It's just not what Arizona football is, unfortunately. Okay, fine. Um, I'll give you that. With that said, to get back to the original question. I am grateful for the for what Jed Fish did this particular season. Oh, yeah. And I'm not going to be an asshole. Sorry, but I mean we're going to be honest here. I'm not going to I'm not going to tweet out some stupidity like a lot of people do and it's so annoying to me. I understand you're pissed. But how about having some class? I mean honestly, these it, it is amazing to me how stupid people can be. I know you're upset. You how do you think I feel who drives down to all the games? Yeah. And, and and waste time 
and gets yeah. home at one in the morning. You've been with a season it. ticket holder for through some really, really yeah, rough to, times, man. To watch this crap. Yeah. You know, to lose to NAU. But, you know, I'm grateful for what Jed Fish did. Do I think he's a snake? Yeah, sure. But am I grateful for him? Yes. Am I going to tweet negativity? Am I going to make, am I going to say stuff about his wife? I mean, do you no. know how you have to be no, such a that's scumbag? Ridiculous. I mean, there no. are people, there are people out there that follow you and I on, on X who are absolute scumbags for doing things like that. They are. No, no I mean, I, I tweeted out, look, I, I had a, I said, I, it's impossible not to have a visceral reaction to that video of Jed signing his new it contract sucks. in there. It's it was awful. terrible. And, it's and awful. you know, I, I, I mean, I've said some, some, some unflattering things about him that I stand by. I mean, there were some things I will admit this when he was initially hired at Arizona, I, I, I tweeted out some things I wasn't proud of because I was just upset at the hire. Cause I thought it was terrible. And obviously it ended up being a good hire for, yeah for this past year, the things I've tweeted out the last day or so, I'm not, I don't regret because I think, cause I stand by them. I, I think that he, he did a great job at Arizona, yeah but he, he, he straight up lied about certain things. He and, did. And I, and I understand that Shane, but for people to go and start, start i mean like oh yeah, it's a whole other a, level to me yeah to make it personal about his family any of that stuff i know that his motto was it's personal but that was not what he had in mind that that video of the washington ad coming to his house was absolutely disgusting. Crap. disgusting it was it was ab- it was tactless. and jed and jed giving them the thumbs up to do that was pathetic i mean really pathetic and his I, note about and the thing that bothered me the most about his how heartbroken he was to leave arizona oh well, jed, up, jed yeah if exactly. it is that heartbreaking did you did, did you have a choice not to? You know, give me a break. I just but, but see, just go. I, okay, I, just go. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack Jed for being a snake oil salesman, but I'm I, I'm also gonna be grateful because we witnessed such an amazing season. Yeah, and I don't know how many other coaches we're gonna bring this kind of a season to Arizona in three years. From yeah. from I, I mean, so on some level, I hope everyone is grateful to what we for what we witnessed. I know we're all being selfish in a way for what could have been, but who knows what could have been? We talked about it too, that we had so many things went right this year. There were really yeah. no big injury. I mean, outside of Jaden Delora and look what that, how that worked out for Noah. Worked out well for Jed too. Yeah. I, I mean, right. I, I don't like that Jed's going to steal players. I think it's crap. I really do. But be grateful for yeah. what we saw and, and for how we felt in the moment. That's all yeah. I'm saying. And and don't don't be one of those people who's on a message board talking about so-and-so's wife and this guy has an alcohol problem. Give me a break. You know what? Just yeah. give me a break. Because as we've seen, you know, it's funny. I put out these videos, totally, totally uh, random thought here, Shane. Put out these videos for Sportsline. I make I make NFL picks. I give score predictions. And you're good at and it, they, too. They, yeah, they, well, I mean, some picks are great. Some, some picks are not great. I think I went three and three this week. Give yourself some credit. But there are people on there, Shane, that called me every name in the book because I didn't pick their team. People mm-hmm. trashing on me because I, I took the Texans over the Browns. I mean, telling me I'm a, I'm a blanket idiot, this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? People that you can tweet, you can write that, but then they won't, oh, they won't up to it when they, when they're wrong. No, everyone's tough, that, everyone's tough be behind person. their phone and computer. Anybody. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Don't be that person. And I, most of you are not. And most aren't. It. Most are just, are just no, really upset right now. And, and I but, get but, it. But, what can but, you control? but you don't No, no, no we're right. Well, like our, our guy Scooby said, control what you can control. We can't control this. You know, we can't control what Jed is, but we can control the way we react to it and the way we will remember this past season. Eventually I'll, right now, I don't want him to think about it. Eventually I will remember it fondly. It's a, we're going through sort of I do a, want gre- to think about a grieving it period right now. Yeah. I do want to know. I want to, th- I, I, I'm just I talking want to about think me. about me. That's fair. I want to think about it because that was that gave us great memories. No, oh, yeah. And, and and we will always listen. Will Jed Fish hold a lore, hold a legacy like Dick Tomey did? No, he's yeah. not going to because of the way he left. He chose not to. Yeah. But you know what? What he did with this program. Thanks, Jed. I maybe some of you disagree. Um. All right. Uh. Let's go to number three. Let's talk candidates. Right now, it's pretty much down to Johnny Nansen and Brent Brennan. Is as for the rumors, there may be a higher Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. So. I tweeted out yesterday something like, you know, bring keep Brennan Carroll and bring on Noah Fafita's dad on the staff. And you said Brent Brennan. And I so I tweeted that out in the moment. And then I thought about it. And I said, you know what? Uh, Shane's right. I, I actually agree. I'm actually going to, instead of agreeing, with me, I agree with Shane. I, Which is I think funny because like three, fourth, three quarters of people actually agreed with you on that because we actually put I, it to a vote. But uh, you did. And I, I did see that. It was interesting on, Wild, on the Wildcat Country uh, Twitter feed. Yeah. I... I 
I would go with, if of the two, I would go with Brent Brennan because I've seen what he's done as a head coach. I don't know what Johnny Nansen could do. And that's why, and Johnny, yeah, that's where I'm going with it. Yeah, a, a couple quick things, because we'll talk about it more when the coach is hired, which could be in the next 24 hours or less, making this podcast relevant. Uh, wouldn't be the first time, but uh, I'll just say this. I think a lot of people are saying, well, Brent Brennan, look at his record. It's below 500 at San Jose's. Have you... You have to appreciate how difficult it is to, to coach and win at San Jose State. And yep. he's he's won seven games three the last four years. You know, what he's done there, obviously the ties to Arizona. But, you know, his guys love playing for him. He can recruit. He just got uh, Chubba Purdy to transfer to, to San Jose State. Yeah, that's so I didn't the, see that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. The guy, so the guy can the guy can recruit. So you have to you have to take those things into consideration. You know, you, it's, it's just it's it's very simplistic to look at the, just look at the win loss record. If you did that, then Washington would never would have hired Jed fish. Cause he's 16 and 21 as a head coach. Okay. So yeah, there's yeah. that. I think he'd be a good hire. Uh, and Johnny Nansen, I, I, I know the defensive guys have started the hashtag campaign and want Nansen to stick around. And if you hire him, you, you probably keep a lot of those defensive guys, but to me, it's maybe, a very, maybe, maybe, but it's a very short-term play versus a long-term play. And the last yeah. thing I'll say is this. I, I still, I believe three years ago and it's just a gut feeling you know, and I was wrong about Jetfish, so take it for with a grain of salt. I think that that Brent Brennan was Dave Hickey's guy, and Jetfish was Robert Robbins' guy. And of course, Doctor Robbins outranks Dave Hickey, and they went with Jetfish. I feel like this time around, I feel like it might be kind of the same way that that Hickey would prefer to go with Brennan, the guy who might be able to stay here longer, even though it's going to be a longer rebuild. And Robbins is going to be more like, let's try to keep this guys together. Let's try to, you know, sell season tickets because we just had a big t- season ticket price hike and, and, and try to keep, you know, and try to keep the momentum going any way we can and maybe stick with Nance. I don't know. It's going to play out that way. I'm just trying to think in my head because, you know, Robbins is going to have a hand in this hire just like he did in the last one. Um, so I, again, long-term for me is Brennan or someone else who has that, you know, the young up and comer and Brennan's 50 years old. He's not young, but you know, the, the up and comer experience, uh, versus a guy who has never been a head coach before and we had doubts about as a defensive coordinator a year ago. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm sure we'll have an answer soon. Uh, I know that it's a, we, it'd be a longer rebuild, but I think we're looking at a rebuild either way, Eric. I don't think there's any escaping it. And uh-huh. so I would go with Brent Brennan at this point. Yeah, I, I would too, and I'll tell you why. Brent Brennan, this is a destination job. Brent Brennan's not yeah. leaving. He has ties to the program. Do I think the ceiling is as high as Jed Fish? I don't know, maybe not, but Brent Brennan's – a guy like who I think would be like Dick Tomey and coach coach here for yeah. a decade if things went well. Yeah, we he knew was, that Jed Tomey, Fish wasn't going to stick around long. We we knew that. I mean, right. Well, Tommy was there for 14 years, and look, most years Arizona was a good team. They had the the Desert Swarm era, the Fiesta Bowl win, the '98 season with our guy Barrett, who we're going to talk to soon. That and that's what I'm talking about. You know, a team that was at least 500 every year and sometimes better. That's what Dick Tomey brought, and that's what I think Brett Brennan can do. And you know, realistically, I think that's where Arizona could settle in nicely as a football program. And I think Brendan could get the, the program there, even though there would be that rebuilding period again, which to me is inevitable. All right. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, it's funny how one day can change our perspectives. Now, Johnny Nansen's hired. We'll talk about the implications. Yep. The only thing about Nansen, you don't know what he can do. You don't know what his offensive staff's going to look like. Um, you know, would he bring back Dwayne Aquina as the defense coordinator uh, with Aquina just leaving for Texas? No Maybe. idea. Yeah. Um but, uh, you know, are the players going to stay? They can tweet all they want right now. But does that mean they're going to stay? No, no mm, guarantee. Probably not. And so I'm some thinking. Some of them will. Some of them will. But I'm taking, if if they think Brennan will, will keep a few, I'm taking uh, Brent Brennan. And, and just like I said a few years ago, that's the guy. And and just accept it. He, he's, he's ready for this destination job. We won't have to look over our shoulder. This is a guy who, if all went well, would be coaching here for 15 or more years. And I would take that. After what we saw with Jed, I would take that in a heartbeat. Agreed. Um, number four, Shane, no matter who they hire, Arizona football is back to the dark ages for the foreseeable future. Well, if you define uh, dark ages as one and 11, like Jed Fish's first year, no, I, I would sell that. I, I think I would buy that. We're probably looking at a, at least one more rebuilding year, probably a sub 500 2024. Um, but I don't think that the program is going to go back to the days of what, you know, the, the, the ash heap that Kevin someone left it in or the John McAvick left it in when Mike Stoops was hired. I don't think that the situation is that dire. Oh, so I do. I, I think, I think it's going to be burnt to the ground if it's the way I, well, the, it, well, it, the, the problem is that, you know, the, this, this hire is late in the, in the process as well. So there's that aspect of it. I think, I think 24 would be rough, but I don't think, I don't think that, but Arizona would have to climb out of the out of the gutter at the same way they did when Jed Fish was hired. 
Okay, fair. Um, I think the dark ages are coming, but maybe I hope I'm wrong. But that mm. I I will I will buy that. All right. Uh, last one for this segment, Shane, and then we'll get to Barrett Baker and get his thoughts. It's understandable why season ticket holders, including myself, would strongly consider giving up our tickets in 2024. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you take this one for the most part. But yeah, certainly buy, especially with with the price hike. You know, the price hike I think came with a promise that you're going to see a, per, a a perennial top 25 team, uh, maybe a top 15 team, compete for a college football playoff spot, and that is probably out the window now. So uh, I I don't again I don't know how much people like to, to pile on Robbins and Hickey. I don't know how much they could have done to compete with what Washington offered Fish. And if he wanted, if he's chasing the money. Then, then they're out of luck. But I certainly understand the frustration, and I understand why some on the fence about renewing their season tickets definitely would not be interested at this point. All right, let me let me say this. I think it is it would be a terrible decision for the university to raise prices at this point. You can't, you can't, you cannot. With Jedfish, you could have. You cannot now. Quite simply, you can't. Because if you raise prices, you'll get you'll get some people to pay more money. Yeah. And others are just going to say, I'm not paying that money. I'm not going to go to the games. So you're going to have less attendance. So, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather, I actually consider lowering prices because the whole goal is to fill the stadium. You fill the stadium, you get, you get people to buy concessions. You get people to yeah. buy parking. I don't but, think but that's going to be on the you, table, you, but I understand. But I understand. You, you, I understand you, your you just got five and a half million. Yeah. You're going to pay your next head coach a lot less than Jedfish. You're probably going to pay your staff less. So, you know what? At this point, you cannot conceivably raise. If they raise prices 25%, these guys are so dumb. It's dumb. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm just saying uh, dumb in terms of the concept of doing that. I, you know, I, I think that they've done a good job in, in a lot of areas. This concept would be very dumb. So let me phrase it that way. Dumb. It, I, it makes no sense from a yeah. marketing perspective. You're not, it does not make sense to yeah. raise ticket prices 25% with if basketball. Go ahead. Fine. I mean, basketball team's still good. We'll talk yeah. about them in the third segment. <laughs> that's a whole other right. issue. That's another issue. But it would be dumb to do that. And I will tell you this. I have been a season ticket holder since 2006. I have missed one game since 2007 outside of the 2020, what was it, two or three home games that mm -hmm. they had when, when nobody was allowed in the stadium. I if, if this program is sent back to the Stone Age and the ticket prices go up, I would strongly – consider not renewing. And I hope somebody is listening to that. No. There is not, yeah. there are not many diehards who drive down like I do. I mean, there, there are some of you out there that do, but and I hope that, you listen because yeah. I'm your P one. Yeah. I was going to say, and the last thing I'll say about this is if, if you're considering that, then I guarantee you other diehards are too, because Eric, Eric, you're a diehard. You, you've through thick and thin with this program. And if you're thinking that way, I guarantee you that a lot of others are as well. Yeah. You know what I'll do Shane is I'll just buy single game tickets to the games that are during the day. I'm not going to go. To, I won't go to the night games yeah. because what's what's the point if it's going to be, uh, you know, why would I drive down and get home at one in the morning uh, to watch a team that's not trying to that's not going to win? And they're going to they're going to raise my ticket prices. I'll just buy single game tickets on the on the open market for five dollars and uh, go down to the day game. Sounds good to me. Yeah, that's fair enough. I, 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 I won't fault you for that. Just your your money and uh, it's in your time and uh, everyone's thinking the same way. A passionate first segment, to say the least. A lot more to come this week. But coming up next, let's talk to Barrett Baker. I'm sure he has a lot to say about everything that's happened this week here on Wildcat Country. What's up, Wildcat Country? Chris Gronkowski here, and I'm at the Ice Shaker Warehouse, the proud sponsor of the Wildcat Country podcast. And I got something new and exciting to show you. We're talking about the 4G printed University of Arizona shaker bottles with the legacy championships on it. Check it out now at iShaker.com. Shane, one of our favorite guests that we always have on. Well, we didn't think we'd have him on this soon, but you know, hey, sometimes uh, things necessitate it. Barrett Baker, former special teams captain with the Tucson Fire Department, uh, back on with us. Barrett, always glad to see you. Now, Shane and I just recorded the first segment of the show. And there's some news it's about 9.30 on Monday night as we do this. And the rumor is that Brent Brennan has been offered the job uh, for to coach Arizona. And the rumor is that Johnny Nansen is in play to be his defensive coordinator. Your thoughts on the Brennan hire, uh, if that comes to fruition, and then Brennan bringing back Nansen, if that were to come to fruition. 
I mean, that that's a slam dunk. And, you know, when, when you're watching Twitter and you're seeing the hashtags and the importance of this hire to the current players, that obviously count, can't be discounted. But I, I'm ecstatic. I, I think Brent Brennan, you know, some people are going to think it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a boring hire, right? What has he done? But that guy knows how to coach. He is somebody that is going to get every single ounce of, uh, from his players, he, he's done an admirable job at a very at, at a place that's very very difficult to win, and he's won consistently after the first two or three years there. Uh, I, I just think that the, the man that you're getting is what we need as a community. Uh, after obviously kind of having our hearts ripped out, and I, I think that getting that package together to where we're able to keep the core players. Uh, and bringing in the coaching staff and continuity that uh, Coach Brennan has had at San Jose State, uh, things look really good for Arizona football right now. I'm I'm very excited, and the the beauty of this, guys, is the fact that we don't know what the the crystal ball is going to do in the future. Uh, you know, three years ago, I was literally disappointed and incensed at the hiring of Jed Fish, and I turned out to be wrong, uh, as well as a lot of other people. Uh, tonight, yeah, I I think that that combination. Uh, it is a real, uh, just a, a positive development. And I think it's going to be really good for us. So I, let me back up for a second, Barrett. And uh, again, thanks for so much for joining us on such short notice again. Um, and we've got, always had so many positive comments when you join us and we really appreciate it. Uh, your thoughts on Jed Fish leaving the program. I mean, I, we all know money talks uh, and Arizona couldn't come close to what Washington offered him certainly, but uh, I, he, he actually convinced me, you know, that the whole thing, you know, we, we thought, we thought he was different, Barrett. We thought he was actually going to stay and he meant what he said. Uh, and then he, you know, he's, he's, he's gone. What are your thoughts? I, I thank him for what he did for Arizona football in, in bringing us back to relevance and the three years where we started to where he left us. That was something that I would thank him for, uh, to your point. When you go on a national radio show 10 days prior to and, and you talk about the fact that you're looking forward to 18 to 22 guys returning and, and bringing a championship, uh, that hits. That hits as a fan. It hits as an alum. And to go through the confusion almost like – and, you know, how things unfolded there, obviously, with Saban's retirement, DeBoer, uh, you know, uh, Lemony Snicket's a series of, of unfortunate events is really how that played out. But I think the most important thing there is that obviously his heart was not in Tucson, Arizona, right? There was, he had interviewed with Michigan state and then that, that was a red flag. It's like, I want that guy that builds the empire here. And there's no reason that it can't happen. If you can win in three years and get us to 10 wins, it can happen here. And I think that passion is something that we need and we need it to be sincere and we need the guy to be here for 10 years and say, Tucson, Arizona, University of Arizona football, we're going to be a top 15 program. Uh, and that's probably the most disappointing thing to me with Coach Fish is that he had an opportunity to do that as a person. Would it be very challenging to turn down a seven-year contract with $49 million or whatever the number is? Absolutely. Um, but he could have been a legend here. And at the end of the day, like I said, I, I – he did what he said he was going to do. He turned us around. I'll, I'll thank him for that. And I'm I'm disappointed uh, that he didn't stick it out. Well said. I think Eric Eric and I agree with you 100 percent on that. Uh, the the possibility of of you know Brent Brennan. Then it, it sounds like you know, based on what Eric said that you know if Johnny Nansen were to be the defensive coordinator, that would just kind of be baked into the cake, and that really wouldn't necessarily be Brennan's decision. It would just be the way. I'm. As much as I'd like to see a lot of these defensive players stay, I I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like if you're the head coach, you should be able to bring in whoever you want. And if he wants to keep Nansen and Nansen wants to come back, that's fine. But what are your thoughts on that? Uh, Derek Odom is a heck of a defensive coordinator from San Jose State. Uh, San Jose State is perennially in a top 30 when it comes to total defense. Uh, Scott White, their linebackers coach, I mean, their system works at San Jose State when it comes to being a very, very good defense. And if Coach uh, Odom is okay with being co-defensive coordinators and having Coach Nansen share that, then I'm okay with that. I mean, no egos, right? That's the key here is that if you're able to get a coaching staff of 10 or 11 guys that come together 
and work towards a goal. But I think that's what Coach Brennan does. When you look at his staff, uh, he doesn't have a high turnover rate when it comes to his staff. And the reason that guys leave the staff is they get poached for higher positions, uh, a la Kevin Cummings. You know, that was a receivers coach that started with Coach uh, Brennan at San Jose State. Jed Fish hired him here. He did very well for us. And uh, who knows what's happening with him. But uh, I think that if they can make that work, and I think, you know, Coach, uh, and I'm going to bludgeon his last name, uh, Theo Malo from San Jose State, uh, that has been there since about 2018. Again, we talk about ties to the Pauli community. The, the San Jose State coaching staff uh, has is littered with West Coast connections. Uh, and in that, they're very tied into the Pauli community. Coach Carter, the running backs coach, uh, just a California legend. So, when people dive deeper into Brent Brennan, I think they're going to be very pleasantly surprised at his coaching pedigree and the staff that he has uh, and what they're going to do for Arizona football. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't get myself off mute here. Now, I, I think as far as it goes, Barrett, I mean, just the way that Jed Fish did this, when you saw the videos, like Shane and I talked about earlier, the video of the Washington AD coming into his house, as somebody who is a former player a, and a diehard for this program, how did that make you feel? I, I It hurt. I, I don't know what other word to say. It was just uh, there was still a U of A uh, welcome sign at the front door. And so when that is being filmed and then they're signing that and and, and hearing the, the, the banter back and forth, you know, that means that they had had to have come to a terms the night before, basically, mm -hmm. because it, it yeah. and, and so just being in the dark and, and thinking that maybe we'd be talking about who our defensive coordinator was today rather than, you know, a, a, a full fledged head coaching search. Uh, it was hard to see that it was hard to see him go to the airport and, and film, the, the you know, the 15 second blurb about Husky Nation, because he did all of that for us as well. I remember very distinctly watching the video from New England uh, when he basically said he was proud uh, to be our next head coach and he looked forward to coming to Tucson. So, uh, you know, Eric, I, I, we hold these players to a high standard, obviously, when it comes to the transfer portal and we get frustrated when they jump ship and, and the NIL and how that's changed things. But it, it's very difficult then to hold them to the standard when a coach can leave at the three-year mark and jump at something like that. Uh, and so, you know, that that college football is in a very different place, as we would obviously all agree on, than it was 15 or 20 years ago, or, or for that matter, even five years ago. So these head coaching changes, uh, the impact it has on the players, it, it's just a mess right now. But I, I think, again, just going back to Coach Brennan, if this works out, the stability that he's going to provide for us uh, is, is it's, it's warming. And I think that we're going to be really uh, pleasantly surprised by it. Well said. Well said on that one. Um, let me ask you about, let's put you in the position of these current players. At, at what point are you tied to the coaches? And at what point are you tied to the university? I, for one, am a, I understand what the coaches and, and maybe certain guys, you know, think they can go further under a jet fish or whatnot. But at some point, aren't you proud to play for the, you know, the the team on the front of your jersey more than anything? I mean, that and your school and the crowd and the rivalry. I mean, that's just me. Am I wrong here? Uh, I, I was disheartened to see. And I mean, I, I love Tyler Manoa, great kid that came in and had an impact on our program. But, you know, just watching his Twitter tonight uh, and, and talking about the fact that if we didn't keep Nansen, that we were going to have an exodus of 40 plus players. And to me, that meant that 30 players were going to regret that decision. Because at the end of the day, man, I bleed red and blue through and through. I'm a wildcat for life. And when you wear that jersey, it has to mean something. So for those players, that would be my ask as an alum of them is, is stick it out, right? You wear that jersey and Tucson loves you and, and they're going to support you. And when you are an Arizona wildcat, you know, it, it's a life changing thing. So why are we just going into the transfer portal until we wait and see what this person brings to the table? And what if they pleasantly, you know, what if, if all of a sudden you're buried on the depth chart and you got a new set of eyes that's looking at you and, and, and maybe you get a shot at being a relevant player again. So, I mean, I think that's the challenge for me is finding out why at first 
uh, the, the, you know, when, when adversity hits, why are we jumping? Why aren't we doubling down and trying to say, I'm going to be part of the, t- of the squad that kept Arizona football relevant. I think Barrett, that it, as much as uh, college football has changed, especially in the last several years, I feel like one thing that probably hasn't changed since your playing days is guys want to go where they can get coached up and have the chance to play at that next level. And I think Jed fish, that was his number one selling point. He put together a staff that had that experience and can, and could could make those I'm gonna say promises, but but certainly the that that pitch that he was very good at, uh, and so that I guess it's my number one concern about whoever the next head coach is, and obviously we just talked about it looks like at this point it would be Brent Brennan. Uh, we're in very fluid situations of recording this on a Monday night, but just how important it is is it for whoever's whoever Arizona's next head coach is Brent Brennan or whoever to put together a staff that is able to, to make that same successfully make that same sales pitch to recruits. It is because I, 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 and it, I mean, you guys already touched base, right? The ultimate goal and why you play football is to try to get to the highest level. Uh, Tanner McLaughlin is a great example though, that remember coach fish gets credit for Tanner McLaughlin, but Tanner McLaughlin walked on. Uh, he, he came from Southern Utah as a walk on with a banged up knee and talent always rises to the top. So his junior year, he didn't start until about the third or fourth game of the season. And, and if we've got the players and that you, and I guess that's our challenge as a coaching staff is how do you take those players and make sure that they're getting the opportunity to succeed. And, but if you're Tetro McMillan, you know, you need a quarterback to throw you the ball. It's real simple. Uh, Jonah Coleman disappointing to me because I think Jonah had obviously a, a, a high ceiling. And I think that somebody like coach Brennan uh, utilizes the running game. And so, I, you know, I would hope that he would be open to something like that. But again, if if you're that next level player, like Jonah Sauvigny and, and those types of players, then the NFL is going to find you. They, they, they just are going to, that's the way it works. And that's their job. They've got 32 teams that have God knows how many scouts that are looking for NFL pedigree, that are looking for the skills to succeed at that next level. So uh, it, it can happen here. We went through a long stretch, though, with uh, Coach Rodriguez and Coach Sumlin where we did not have NFL players. Uh, it looks like that's turned around. But I, I think that you guys are right on that. I think that you know Arizona football, if we recruit the way we can with these facilities that are on par with everybody else's, there's no reason that we can't uh, continue to find the Jonas and and that type of player. Yeah, my, my and I agree with you on that, Barrett. My, my last question for you is, and it's something I mentioned to Eric in our first segment is, I feel like you know, Eric, there's this, for lack of a better term, it's kind of a pecking order in college football and money talks, and I feel like Arizona football. You know, I, I would love for them to be in a spot where they were under Dick Tomey, where, you know, they weren't a, a championship contender every year, obviously, but they had some very good years. Your, your 98 season, the the Desert Swarm season, the Fiesta Bowl win, and they were at least competitive and at least, uh, you know, had, were in play for a bowl game every year, even back then when there aren't, weren't as many bowls. I think Arizona, realistically, that's probably the ceiling for them is to be that kind of program where it, you know, the minimum expectation every year is a bowl, is a bowl game. And at best, it may be once every every so often you have a chance to play for that expanded college football playoff. What are your thoughts on that? Am I being too cynical? Is Arizona capable of more than that? Where do you stand? Uh, it's going to be real interesting, actually, moving conferences now and and finding w- what is our you know pecking order in the new conference. I guess uh, it's difficult to win recruiting battles against USC and UCLA and Stanford. Uh, you know, and and so I guess. We're going to be recruiting against different schools now in that regard. Um, it, it's just winning's hard. And I think that obviously we went through a, a stretch where that was really uh, in our face and we had become a bottom tier program. And so I think that consistency and, and developing that program where you don't have a five win season and a 10 win season and a four win season and a six win season. Right. The, the expectation to your point is that you're going to a bowl game every single year. Uh, and in today's world, I don't think that's too much to ask because that means that you're basically 500 and you're getting seven wins. That's what we deserve as a fan base. Uh, if we get the right players and the right coaches to push the right buttons, seven wins should happen all the time. So I don't think it's unrealistic. I think when you get that special group of players together and it usually is when they're seniors, right, you you've built through the program, you're physically strong everything works out that right way. 
that's when you get the 11 win season, the 10 win season. That's hard to do every year when you're Arizona football. Seven wins, absolutely. That's the standard. 10 and 11 wins, that's the one that comes every so often when you get that special group. All right. So I want to ask it. Um, I want to ask two questions. First of all, and, and Shane and I just talked about these in the first segment. Do you believe that Arizona football will go back to the Stone Age? Uh, with the Brent Brennan hire in terms of the roster being pillaged. Let's say Nansen does not come back and Derek Odom is the guy. And it's a great hire, don't get me wrong. Do you believe we are looking, based on what everything looks like, like a bowl team or are we talking four and eight again, if not worse, next year? I mean, it, it's just hard to forecast because we really do need to see what players are going to stay in. Uh, I mean, if you if you get some of the skill players, obviously like Fafita and, and T Mac and those guys and and Jacob Manu that are core players because they're leaders on the team, and I think a lot of what they do is going to have a ripple effect. But if if Coach Brennan is able to get into the room with those guys, I think they're going to believe in him. I really do. And if that is the case, and, and we, we've talked about this before as well. How has football changed when it comes to the name, image, likeness, and all of those things? That's a that's a real component here. So do we as you know a community adapt with that, and do we throw our support behind the football program and give Coach Brennan and the staff the tools to succeed? And so we all have to kind of look at ourselves in the mirror and say, what does this program mean to us, and, and make sure that we do our part. Um, but – I, I believe in Coach Brennan. You know, I played with his brother, Brad, and uh, he's mm -hmm. just uh, – it's a great family. I think that, again, get stay in the room with the guy. And if you do that, I think you're going to be uh, pleasantly surprised. And, and if these guys give him a chance, uh, I, I think Arizona football is going to be very, very relevant uh, in the 2024 football season. So I went on a rant. My last question for you, I went on a rant in the uh, first segment saying, you know, I drive down two hours each way uh, to go to all these games. And, you know, if they raise ticket prices 25 percent and then the roster leaves, is it worth going? Um, uh, if Brent Brennan is the guy, convince me, as you kind of just did, con convince me even more why it's a good decision to keep those tickets and why to believe in the future of Arizona football with Brent Brennan. And, and I guess the second part of the question, since I'm just asking a bunch here, do you think Brent Brennan could be, maybe he is the long-term guy like Dick Tomey, assuming that he's moderately successful? Yes, to all of the above. And I'll tell you why, because there's a hundred kids that are 18 to 22 years old that want to walk into Arizona stadium and have it packed. And so when I get my season tickets that I've had for 15 plus years, it's to make those relationships with those kids and make Arizona Stadium a, a place to remember every Saturday that, that they go out there and, and, and get to take the field. But it's all tied in together because Coach Brennan needs Arizona Stadium to be packed so he can recruit effectively. So we have a home field advantage. And, and we talked about that even under Coach Fish, that you know the community and the buy-in to the program – uh, it, it it it's just so tied in together. We have, you know, the, the past is sometimes glorified, I guess I, I would say, but, you know, Coach Tomey at the time, there was a lot of frustration with him. Uh, Shane would point to that, that, you know, we had a great season in 93 and then we tapered off and then had a great season in 98 and then tapered off and the inconsistency. But at the end of the day, it just shows you how hard it is to win on a, on a you know, year in and year out basis. But Coach Brennan you know, he is going to remind a lot of people with his steady leadership of Coach Tomey. And I'm okay with that. And I hope that the community is as well, because he's a genuine guy that's going to show up and he's going to give his best to the team. He's going to give his best to the community. And I think people are going to fall in love with him. And, he, you know, he's got a, a great personality. He's got a good smile uh, that, that people gravitate towards. And I don't think, again, this is always important. When people leave, what do they say about you? That's just as important as what they say about you to your face. And I think with Coach Brennan, that the legacy that he that he leaves behind in San Jose State, that is a tough, tough place to win. Horrible facilities, all of those things. And he weathered the storm early in his career 
where, I mean, he was one and 11 and two and a 10 or something. It was a rough start to where was he even going to get to year three or four of that contract, but seven wins at San Jose state, it is worth something uh, because you take, two and three star kids that that go to San Jose State because they got passed over by everybody else but they play USC they play Oregon State you know and and they might not win but then when they get into their conference they always are in the top 2 in their conference and so when things are equaled out and that happens at Arizona I think we're going to be a competitive program and I'm really really excited uh, I'm going to go to bed real happy tonight if this works out and I think this was a slam dunk uh that that Coach, or excuse me, Dave Heakey deserves a lot of credit uh, if he was able to to marry the requests of the student athletes with what he thinks is the best thing for the program. We wanted Brent Brennan a few years ago, might yes. be getting our wish now. And by the way, I just want to point out San Jose State went on a nice run uh, towards the end of the season. Brennan's not so great in bowl games. Um, yeah. it, you know, they lost oh, to Coastal great. Carolina. That's... Yeah, not, not great in bowl games. But they should have been playing for the Mountain West title, if not yes. for computer power rankings. Yeah. Uh, where UNLV he, got in over them. He beat so. Odom head-to-head, -head, right? I mean, UNLV, yeah. that was a big name. A lot of people talked about Odom and the job he's done. Uh, you know, it's it just that, that to me, was a great point, Eric, that they looked bad. They were 1-5 and five or 1-6, and six, and, and, and that shows you that the coaching, I don't think, changed. Something changed, though. The locker room came together. Uh, maybe they got some lucky bounces, but, man, they finished the season strong. Uh, I, I think that he can push the buttons. And I think his mantra a few years ago is I'm still climbing, you know, that you got to come together and, and, and coalesce the team and he'll come up with something that, that we get some buy-in from our players and, and really looking forward to it. They were one in five. Good call Barrett. The one in five. And then they went on a run where they beat New Mexico by 28, Utah state, 21, Hawaii, 35, Fresno state, 24, San Diego state, 11, then UNLV by six. We won't talk about the bowl game because bowl games, you know, as we know, you know, yeah. when they're in your favor, great. And when they're not, so be it. But thank you as always for joining us. Uh, I'm sure based on all, everything that's going on, I'm sure we're going to talk to you sooner than later. Uh, thanks for doing it last minute and uh, bear down. You, you really kind of made us all feel better. And uh, we always appreciate that. Catch for life, guys. Bear down. Great to catch up with uh, Barrett Baker. Uh, great insight as always. You know, Shane, we were going to break down basketball a lot more and make picks and everything like that. We'll talk a little bit about that. But just, you know, since we recorded the uh, first bit of the show a little bit earlier, the Brent Brennan news likely to happen. You and I will break it down a little bit later this week, probably. Uh, if he's the guy seeing what if the dance and stuff is true, I personally don't think it will be. Um, that would be a home run if so. We'll talk about which players are in the portal. Everything How do you like that, feel about I, that, Eric? I mean, I I I love the idea of, of Nansen obviously retaining the players, but I feel like uh, you know, new guys got to be able to bring in his own guys. Here's the thing about Nansen that I kind of question, Shane. He he left, and maybe yeah. it's because he didn't see eye to eye with Fish. But I, I don't like the idea of a guy leaving and then coming back and being your head coach like in ten days. Yeah, it just. That's why I, I endorse Brennan Carroll. I, I guess he doesn't have the you know head coach mantra like his dad, the the charisma and whatnot. So okay, fine, I get that. Um, I I would have preferred somebody that you know was was a better fit there. But okay, fine. Uh, Brennan, I like Brennan. I think could be a, a nice long term play. You heard what Barrett said about him is obviously very positive. Um, I I would be pleased with Brent Brennan. We endorsed him a, a few years ago on this program. Yeah. And it might finally come true. Wow, it's uh, three and a half years ago, or almost. Yeah, know, three and change. Lot, I'll tell you a lot of negativity, though. A lot of uh, fans, on just on, on I've seen on Twitter X, have not do not care for the hire at all. Um, but really, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think they're getting caught up in his record. He was a 500 coach. He's one or barely above 500 the last couple of years at, at a a non power five. So I, I think that is so simplistic. And uh, and I think that the idea is that Arizona is just settling now. And I don't think that's the case at all. I don't think they would have settled for Brennan three years ago. I don't think that was settling three years ago. If they would have gone with Brennan, I don't think it's settling now. But, you know, we could talk about to our blue in the face and we will. But, you know, the proof is going to be in the wins and losses. And I, I think I like the hire. I understand why people don't. And we'll definitely discuss it more in the next uh, days. And I, weeks. I, I, I don't I don't understand why people don't like the hire. Um, maybe it's the, you don't you don't know, like. What did Johnny Nansen? I don't know. We all wanted Johnny Nansen fired last year. 
Yeah. And, and I guess that the the players like him, but but the only thing here's the thing, the Nansen thing. If you could get the players in writing to say we are staying, but that's not possible. Yeah. And I just again, as much as I'd like to see these guys stick together, it's just it's such a short term play. I mean, look, the, we had you know a week ago we had aspirations of winning a Big Twelve championship next season. I think that's out the window, regardless this oh, year, yeah, because gone. there's going yeah. to there's going to be some rebuild. They're going to lose more top players. They've already lost some. They're going to lose more. So the, anyone clinging to this idea that Arizona is going to be a ten win season again, it's I very very unlikely it's going to happen. You know, as much as I like Brent Brennan, I don't think he's going to do that's going to happen next season. I think he could possibly get Arizona there again eventually. There is going to be another rebuild coming, and he's going to have to bring it. Because, you know, it, I don't know if the relationship between Fish and Nansen was an issue or not, but you, the last thing you want to do is, is is tell a new head coach, you got to you got to go with this guy. You don't know how they're going to get along. You don't know how they're going to interact, what their relationship's going to be like. That, to me, is just such a potential recipe for disaster that I, I think that, you know, the the short-term benefits are going to be are going to be far out out. The, the long-term issues could far outweigh the short-term benefits is what I'm trying to say. So ASU is happy because they have Dillingham. Well, somewhat happy because they have Dillingham and he's not going to leave for anything else because he's an a- ASU alum. Brent Brennan is tied to this program. Uh, and as we said earlier in the show, like I don't see him leaving for another job like Jed Fish. Jed Fish was, was always looking ahead to the next job. We, I think Brent Brennan would be, and Johnny Nansen would be too, by the way. Just let me let me put that out there. If you hire Johnny Nansen and he wins big, you think he's staying? There's no, no chance. No. Brent Brennan? Yeah, I do. I think Brent Brennan would say, "Hey, I'm 50 years old. I want to coach. You know, I want to be a long term guy and be the next Dick Tomey at the school." And you know, something I, I wanted to ask Barrett. I'm sure we'll have him on again and we'll chat about it. Is you know, Jed Jed was to his credit very very good at embracing alumni in a way they hadn't been in a long time. And I will give if nothing for nothing else, Jed's legacy was was opening those doors. And I hope. Brent Brennan, if again, if he's the next head coach at Arizona, keeps that going. And I suspect that he will. I, I hope that he embraces the, you know, the, the alumni, use utilizes them too, like like Rob Gronkowski on TV. You know, that's a no-brainer. You know, use those guys and embrace those guys and don't just tell them, oh, yeah, the facilities are open for you. Actually interact with them, uh, find you know, allow them to promote your program. Cause I mean, you saw it. You know, as much as recently as a week or two ago, you know, guys like Marquise Flowers and Jack Richardson just basically preaching Arizona football because Arizona football is back. The, the the alumni are your are your are your top ambassadors if you'll let them be them be be the ambassadors, and I think Brent Brennan will continue that and and maybe even enhance it uh, the way that Jed Fish did to his credit. And if he doesn't, I will be on. I will call him out for it for sure. No, I hate to say this, but I just in reading some of the social media hate, I mean, there's a lot of dumb people. That you, you said it, Eric. I didn't. I did. There's a lot of dumb people for every fan base. And unfortunately, social media brings out the worst in, in some people. They just can't help themselves. It's like word vomit. Yeah. You know, you hide behind a keyboard. That's well, what I, I mean, look, I said I've said some stupid stuff. Like again, when Jet Fish was initially hired, I ended up deleting. But you're fine to disagree with that. Yeah, but you're fine to say that's not good. But the the people that like don't like Brent Brennan's a good coach. Is he? A, is he? A, I think it's a great. This would be a great hire. Do I really think that if Johnny Nansen was the hire, all these players are going to say no? I don't. Maybe I would have been wrong, and and I'll own it. But well, I don't believe a, that. Yeah, from a cynic, from a, a purely cynical perspective, Eric. Who else is Arizona going to get? I mean, th- there are some young guys too who who are are promising as well. I like 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 as uh, Jason Candle at Toledo. I would have yeah. been okay with him too. And there's some other guy, the coach from Texas State, thirty five, yeah, yeah, I like th- that. thirty five year old guy. Yeah, yeah, but he's not going to last very long. I mean, yeah. he's going to be gone as soon as he can. Yeah, and I think I think Brennan is on par with those guys. I really do. And I I think this is a again a destination job for him. Now, if he get if he does well at Arizona and you t- offer twice as much money somewhere else, then maybe he'll go too. That's always a possibility because you know we we you know fullest one shame on us, right? Or you know you know however that saying goes. But I I do think that you know we know now that Jed saw this as a stepping stone. I don't think Brett Brennan's going to come to Arizona looking at it that way. So I, at least from that perspective, I will put, I will put my cynicism aside um, because I think that, that Brennan really does, you know, Jed Fish paid great lip service to Dick Tomey, 
Brent Brennan actually embraces and loves Dick Tomey and what he did for the program. And, and he'll continue on that, that, uh, that legacy. With that said, I'm going to stand by something I said in the first segment, and I will reaffirm this again. This hire, as, as much as I like Brent Brennan, if this is the hire, you cannot conceivably raise ticket prices 25% if you're the mm-hmm. university. I agree. You just can't. Yeah. It, it is a it is a dumb, stupid marketing move. It is like I, I know you may need the money, but you're yeah. gonna get less people in the stands right. by doing that and less in less overall revenue in that in that case. Well, yeah, it's like any business, any company that sells a product, it's like how much can we raise prices and, and at least keep the same amount of people or close to it? Because you raise it a certain amount, then that's nice. You, more people are gonna buy it, but if fewer people buy it, then you're gonna make less money. I mean, it's just you know, it's economics one oh one. So yeah, twenty five percent. I I understand, you know, raising it with the price with you know you know, tied into inflation, which is kind of out of control as well, not quite 25%. So I, if you need to, you know, bump it up three, 5%, I get that. But 25 as rumored, that is the that 10% is losing strategy. Yeah. 10, you okay with 10? A, uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, let's say my tickets are $900. Okay, fine. And then it goes up to a thousand basically. Okay. Yeah. For, fine. That's five, 500 a pop. I'm saying. Well, um, let, let me let me ask you this, Eric, since we talked in the first segment and since we've learned since this podcast has been going that it looks like Brennan's going to be offered the job. And, you know, if 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 he is, then it's a good chance he's going to accept it. Would that make that hire make you more likely to be a season ticket holder in yes. 2024? Yeah. Yes. And, and I know there's going to be roster turnover, but I think, Brennan, it, it's a long term play. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you're not you're not caving to the players demands. Um I mean, maybe I sound like a hypocrite to some from what I said earlier in the show, and that's mm. fine. Um, I, I I mean, I'd have to see what happens if Brennan loses the entire team and brings in a bunch of, you know, not nearly as highly rated players. I may I may sit this one out if the ticket prices go up. And I know there's an extra home game in there, so obviously you're going to get somewhat. But I mean, if it goes up 25%, yeah. I... Yeah, everyone's got to cut off. It's like, okay, I'm willing to pay this much, but not that much. You know, that's everyone. We're going to do another podcast sometime this week. We'll break down the Brennan hire if that's the guy or Nansen or whatever, however it goes down. But uh, just as we've recorded, we started this at, at you know, nine o'clock uh, Arizona time on Monday night. It's 10, 15 as we record this part and things have gotten interesting. So uh, there's that. Let's talk a little basketball just for a second, Shane. I mean, pretty, pretty bad weekend. Uh, the men's team was pretty bad. And if only that was the worst thing that happened this weekend. Um, yeah, right. And yeah. the women's team got swept in or I mean, oh, uh, well, the women's much- let's start with the women's team real quick. You know, they, uh, gosh, they, they blew a five point lead with less than 30 seconds left at Oregon State. You know, that's, that was that's inexcusable. That was a game they should, yeah, game they should have won. You know, they, they gave up too many offensive rebounds late in that game. That was a brutal one. And then losing the very close one to Oregon. Uh, with that said, they, they're still. Plenty of opportunities for quality wins in the Pac-12. They're probably from went from the the inside of the tournament bubble to the outside, but they could still get back there because because the Pac-12 on the women's side is much better than the Pac-12 on the men's side. And it's a, from that perspective, it's a shame that the Pac-12 is folding not not from the men's side but from the women's side. So disappointing, but uh, you know there's still a chance to to turn things around and at least sneak into the tournament. Uh, on the men's side, uh, I it's. There's no excuse for this because you just you you look across the landscape of college basketball, you know anyone who's paying attention, it's like look at all the upsets. Look at how many teams, ranked teams, are losing to unranked teams, especially on the road. And and Arizona had to be prepared for this. I do think, and I tweeted this out, that I I think it is, t- and it's not an excuse, but it is just the reality that it is tougher for Arizona's players to get up for these kinds of games where it's a sparse crowd in Pullman, Washington versus going into Cameron indoor or to a packed arena in, in Phoenix, where we were at for the Alabama game, that adrenaline just doesn't keep rushing in and it's tougher for them to get up for these games. That is no excuse. They should find ways to win these games. Anyway, when they took the lead, when Caleb Love hit that three, they should have, they should have found a way to win. Uh, I think that even made it worse. Um, Again, I, maybe I'm being stubborn, but nothing has changed my mind that this team, they put it all together they could still be a Final Four team, but they've you know, we, they need more uh, consistent play from Kylan Boswell. Maybe he gets benched in favor of Jaden Bradley for a couple of games. We'll have to see what Tommy Lloyd does this week. Uh, but it's it's disappointing. They're probably going to come home, going to come home and win, beat UCLA and USC. They better because they both stink, and then they're going to go on the road and have trouble again. It's probably going to be that way through March, and they're not going to get a one seed at this point, most likely. Um, I don't. I don't place as high a value on a one seat as a lot of people do, but yeah, but you're, yeah, I think it's uh, right now, Shane, they're 12th in the, 
in the AP rankings. That's yeah. that's the last three seed if it all held up. They're two, you probably are, a two or three as of right now. Oh, I think a two is in trouble, is in deep yeah, trouble. Maybe. Because this team is not showing it can win on the road anymore. Yeah. I mean, and, and you're two games behind Oregon. You're not getting the two seed if you can't win the regular season conference title and you're two yeah. games behind Oregon. Yeah. And I mean, you're looking, ASU. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're, you are uh, definitely a, a three. I, I could see him as low as a five. I mean, yeah. if they can't win on the road and Kylan Boswell, um, he's not get he, he is regressing now. He's probably not going to the NBA unless they make a deep run in the, in the tournament. But I mean, to, to do it, he was, terrible the other I, what is going on there yeah it, well and we, i sung his praises last week after he was uh you know he, he looked better against colorado and utah but he's he's going through it right now just in terms of uh consistency yeah i saw a mock draft uh as recently as like, like three weeks ago they had him going as like the number 22 overall pick in the draft not looking likely at this point which i guess is kind of good news for arizona if you're thinking about year three i saw someone post that they'd rather have creaser than boswell i i would not. I still would take Boswell. That's a well. du- that's just a dumb. <laughs> just a dumb. But a look, from a team perspective, the way I look at it, good news, bad news. Good news in the NCAA tournament, there are no true road games, so there's that. Bad news is, and and it's something else I mentioned on on social media is, I feel like this team is is, is likely to beat a one seed as they would a fourteen seed. I th- in other words, I think they would struggle as much against either, just because mm. it's tougher for them to get up against. Uh, get up for those kinds of games. Problem is you got to beat the 14 seed first. Like if there's a, there are three seed, you got to beat the 14 seed first. Um, but you know, there's no style points in the, in, in the NCAA tournament. You find a way to win each game. It, ugly as it was, like I said before, the 97 team, all of their tournament wins were by single digits. Um, so not much has changed. I was disgusted by the result because they should have beaten a bad or an average Washington state team. But Again, I don't place as high a premium as a, on a one seed as, as a lot of people do because we've seen what can what Arizona could do or not do with a one seed as recently as two years ago. Well, uh, it's going to be interesting times this weekend. Let's make a couple. I mean, we're not going to do the full college basketball picks. We've had a long enough show as is Shane. Uh, Arizona beats USC on Wednesday and UCLA on Saturday by how many? I think we'll win by double digits for both. Yeah. Not so yeah, get, because, I, well, because number one, Arizona is going to come back and they're going to use their home crowd to win easily. But plus UCLA is just so bad right now. I mean, that's the one thing I think Arizona fans can take heart in is that Mick Cronin is maybe more miserable than we are right now. He's seems like he's lost that team. Uh, and yep. then USC has got injury problems. Washington state beat them on the road before they beat Arizona. So they should come, even if they don't play their best, they should come back and, and, and beat the LA schools. Easily. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Arizona big performance against USC is also a mess. Their point guard Isaiah Collier is out. Yep. Uh, I think they win by 15. I think Arizona beats UCLA by 12. I think you're right, both double digits, and then maybe we'll feel better about things. But I mean, college maybe. basketball, nobody's really winning on the road right now. Yeah. Teams are teams are losing consistently on the road. So I mean, is what it is. Um, but it's. I want to. We got to see something. You you got to play well this week. Uh, the fact that we're behind Oregon and ASU and the yeah. Pac-12 is just a- well. And the last thing I'll say is it's all about timing. It's how you're playing going into March and playing in that tournament. Yeah. And if Arizona's going to go go through the crapper, you might it might as well be in January instead of March. They have a couple months to figure things out. As long as they go in the tournament playing, you know, more like they did against uh, Duke and Michigan State and Wisconsin than they did against Stanford and Washington State, they'll be fine. No guarantees. Tournament's a crapshoot, but. Uh, maybe I'm being stubborn, but my mind just hasn't been changed about this team, even with their, their pain in the butt struggles. My last comment on everything as a fan control, what you can control. Yeah. There's nothing that you can do on Twitter or anywhere else. That's going to make the basketball team play harder, or that's going to make the football team hire the coach you want or the player you want to stay to not leave. Be Be the best person you can be. Show your fandom. And if you're upset, then protest in a in a peaceful way. If you're a season ticket holder and you think that the football team's going the wrong direction, then don't go anymore. If you're a basketball season ticket holder and you don't like the way the team's playing, either sell your tickets or leave them empty. Yeah. Don't, I mean, you can't listen, we're all upset about what's happened, you know, over the last few days. It stinks. But Keep a level head, control what you personally can control, and let's hope for the best.
Yeah. And, and, and yeah, and be smart about it. And you know, being a fan, Eric, is all about emotion over logic. You know, that's why we do it in the first place. You know, I, I had a, I drove up uh, north to Flagstaff for the Martin Luther King weekend uh, with uh, my wife and son. And, you know, wife and I were talking about it, you know, because she's not into sports, but I was talking about it after Jed Fish decided to leave. And it's like, she, she's not into sports. And she said, you know, maybe one of the reasons I'm not into sports is because I can't control anything that happens. You know, it's all up. You know, we are all at the mercy for, for college football and basketball specifically. We're all at the mercy of 18, 19 and 20 year old kids. You know, we, we can cheer our lungs out and we can buy the merchandise, but really it, it comes down to them. And so it is a motion dri- driven fandom is completely emotion emotional. It's, it, it's all entertainment. It's all emotion. And that's going to come out. That's why we're so frustrated. But like you said, you can do it in a positive way. And the best way you can vote is with your pocketbook or, or your credit card or your, you know, your Apple pay or whatever you want to call it these days. Uh, or, 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 you know what? One. Keep it even simpler, Shane. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Yeah. And don't talk about it and, and you know, focus on other things, but yeah. don't be, don't be that person. Don't, yeah. I mean, we're all upset. But and control, I mean, but you can control like a hundred percent. And if you are, I'm going to say this once again, if you are tweeting a, a kid for leaving, I mean, as much as I disagree with certain players that leave, but if you do that, you go look resist, at resist that temptation yeah, at all. Go costs, look in the mirror and, and figure out what, what has gone wrong to do. Don't be uh, if as a, as a listener of this program, if you've gotten this far in the show, thank you. First of all. Yes. Uh, and, and secondly, be smarter. Yeah. That's all I ask. So, uh, thanks to Bear Baker for joining us. For Shane Dale, I'm Eric Cohen. Uh, it's never a dull moment here on mm-hmm. Wildcat Country. We'll be back at some point this week to talk more, but uh, thanks for listening. And as always, bear down. Bear down.